Have you tried to develop a connected IoT device with cellular or Wi-Fi technology? If so, you've probably spent countless hours digging through AT command manuals or Wi-Fi SOC documentation, only to find that you have to write thousands of lines of code in order to create a secure and reliable connection to AWS IoT Core. Well, all of that's about to change with AWS ExpressLink modules that really simplify the process of securely connecting to the cloud. In this video, I'm gonna show you how in as little as five AT commands, you can get connected out of the box with a Wi-Fi product or LTE CAT-M product. To evaluate AWS ExpressLink, we have two boards available. On the left, we have the SparkFun Sarah R510 AWS ExpressLink board. And this has a ESP32 MicroMod host processor on here. And this enables really rapid development for Arduino or ESP IDF, as well as a quick connector, which is a really handy way to connect external I squared C devices directly to the carrier board. And SparkFun has a wide variety of sensors, um, as well as some that we'll go into in the demo today, such as heart rate monitors, displays that you can easily connect to this carrier board. We also have the Nora W256 Wi-Fi evaluation board, and this can plug right into your PC, uh, Linux system, Mac system um, using USB, and it also has headers for external UART control. To get started with the Sarah R5, you'll want to navigate to the Getting Started Guide on the eBlox website. You'll also find a similar guide for the Nora W256 for Wi-Fi as well. The getting started process is nearly identical for both modules, where on the cellular module you'll need to configure the APN, and on the Wi-Fi module you'll need to configure an SSID and passphrase. We'll quickly walk through those steps that are outlined in the getting started guide here. The first thing you'll want to do is create an AWS account and set up the relevant permissions for IoT development. Once you create your AWS account, and the link can be found in the getting started guide, you'll want to open the AWS IoT console. Once that console is open, you're going to want to navigate to the settings tab, and then copy your endpoint over to a notepad or somewhere you can send that to the module in a few steps. After setting up your AWS account, you'll want to connect the board to your computer via a USB-C cable, and then connect to a serial terminal as outlined in the Getting Started Guide. Once that's done, you can go ahead and turn on the Sura module by pushing the power on button on the board, and a white LED will light up. You'll also get a prompt on your serial terminal saying, welcome to uBlock's AWS IoT Express Link Sura R5. Once you see that prompt, you're gonna to want to send the endpoint that you just saw in your IoT console and send that to the module itself. To claim this device on your AWS account, go to the AWS IoT console and create a new thing following the process outlined in the Getting Started Guide. You'll need to get the certificate off of the module by sending AT plus conf question mark certificate and then copy that into a text editor and save that onto your PC. You'll need to upload that certificate to your AWS IoT account and then you'll be able to set up relevant policies as outlined in the Getting Started Guide. Once you complete those steps, then you're good to go, you're ready to connect. All you'll need to do from now on anytime you want to connect to AWS IoT is simply send AT plus connect. This could take, you know, 30 seconds to a few minutes on, upon first registration as it needs to perform a network scan, but subsequent re registrations should be much faster. Once you're connected, then you're ready to go ahead and publish some data. We'll show you how to do that in the upcoming demo section. Let's talk about what a complete end-to-end -end solution for connected health could look like using ExpressLink. 
So over here we have the R5 AWS board as well as the Nora, so both LTE M and Wi-Fi. This is streaming data directly to AWS IoT Core, which is then storing that data in Amazon TimeStream and then displaying it in a, on a dashboard in real time using the managed Grafana service on AWS. What's nice about the R5 board over here is that it already has a host processor on it. We have an ESP32 micromod that's running Arduino, but this can also support ESP IDF. Now the host is running some simple Arduino code that we'll walk through that is displaying the heart rate measurement on an OLED display and then sending it up to IoT Core. So let's take a look at what that code looks like. Let's start with the initialization of these devices in Arduino. Again, this is running on the ESP32 host that's running some Arduino code. So the serial USB connection allows us to connect an external serial monitor using the USB-C port on the SparkFun board. And then we have two UART connections, one to the Sarah device and one to the Nora device. We're gonna initialize the display and then jump right into initializing the ExpressLink modules. So we want to configure the SSID and the passphrase if we're using Wi-Fi. And to do that, it's only two commands, one for the SSID and one for the passphrase. Once that's done, you want to configure the topic that you want to publish the data to. We're using the topic, topic one. Once that topic is configured, we're just going to initialize our heart rate sensor so we can start reading from it. And then in a loop, we're going to read the heart rate values every second. And this can take a few tries to actually read that data. So we're just running this in a continuous loop. Once the heart rate sensor has a valid reading, we're going to send that to topic one using AT plus send one and format that data in JSON format. So we're gonna send it the heart rate, the confidence of that heart rate, as well as the blood oxygen level. And that one command is all you need to send to the module to send it up to the cloud. So really all we're doing here, we initialize the SSID, we set the passphrase, and then we configure the topic, and then we sent the data up to the cloud. If I place my finger on the sensor, it's gonna go ahead and start taking a reading. And once it has a reading, it's simply going to publish that to the heart rate topic Now, if we wanted to modify this code to work with the cellular device, all we would need to do is set the APN that is determined by the SIM card, and we would do that instead of setting the SSID and passphrase. For these evaluation boards, it already comes with a SIM card and there's no need to set that APN, but on the production devices, you will need to configure that on your own. If you compare the ExpressLink AT command manual to a standard cellular AT command manual, you'll see that ExpressLink just has about 20 AT commands that covers everything from provisioning to connecting the device to over the air updates of both the host as well as the module compared to a standard CATM cellular AT command manual with about a thousand pages where you have more granular control over the module itself, but it can add a lot of complexity, especially in the software development phase. Now let's walk through what code would look like on a standard LTEM module to get connected to AWS IoT Core. And just by looking at the code, you can see it's gonna be quite a bit more complex and involved. So. The first thing you have to do is come up with a process to manage your keys and certificates and load those onto the devices. This can be done by using the modems file manager and secure servers like an FTP server 
or streaming that data to your host in a secure enclave using a secure TLS connection or IP connection. Um, and then you have to load those certificates into the module itself. All of that is taken care of on ExpressLink as we discussed in the factory. Now, if your CatM modem doesn't support TLS internally, you will need to use an external MQTT client with a TLS stack to get connected to IoT Core. And that's what this is showing here. It's showing some raw binary strings to connect to IoT Core and then publish that data. So this is what an MQTT connection would look like without that TLS or MQTT client on the cellular module itself. Now, if you do have a module that supports an MQTT client and TLS, uh, such as the Sera R500, um, you could then just connect directly to the endpoint and then use the integrated client to publish to the topic and subscribe to topics as well. So the, the key over here is that you really still have to manage the certificate lifecycle and provisioning of those devices, which adds a lot of complexity to your deployments, as well as really needing to develop a framework around monitoring the MQTT connection um, and ensuring that that data is being delivered reliably. Let's talk about security and the supply chain of trust. So typically when you develop a Wi-Fi or cellular connected product with the intention of connecting to AWS IoT Core, you need to have a process to load certificates and keys into each module to allow it to securely connect to the cloud. So what's nice about AWS ExpressLink is we have pre-provisioned the certificates and a unique ID that's stored in a discrete root of trust element, a secure element that's inside of the module, avoiding the need to expose your subcontractors or OEMs or even your end users to those certificates and the applicable APIs. Instead, the module can directly connect to the AWS cloud and this can be done at scale. For more information, check out the product pages for the Nora W256 and the Sera R5 AWS on the Ublox website for getting started guides and tutorials on how to use these products. We guarantee that it's gonna be the fastest way to get connected via Wi-Fi or cellular and create a reliable, secure ecosystem for your connected products.